All right, everyone. So this is just a quick demo on how to do these color theory uh, spheres. So as you can see, I've already kind of started a little bit. What I did is I put my six spheres on. I actually just put them on by taking this cup, turning it upside down, and tracing it. So do the same with your cups. We have cups in the classroom. You could definitely use that, or if you're doing this from home, uh, use your any cup from home. The idea is we want to fit six on here. Now in order to understand what we're doing, you have to have done the color theory lesson yesterday. So just check out the color theory on the announcements page. It's linked in with this lesson and it should be um, around this video. Now, as you can see, I've started two. Uh, the monochromatic ones are the easiest, but with every one, it's kind of the exact same process. So you start with your dominant color, which means the color that's going to be the base of everything you're doing. So when I did this one, I started with gray, a light tone of gray which is this, remember this is the mid-tone, this is the highlight, this is the shadow. So I started with the mid-tone here, painted the entire thing that mid-tone. I did the same here to the monochromatic with the color, I used green, and I painted this green all the way through. Now remember with monochromatics, the shadow, or the shade, is adding black, and the highlight, which we're also going to call the tone, is adding white. So it's important to do all of these at around the same time so that your paint has a chance to dry. If your paint stays wet and you keep painting over top of it, you're going to get this, which happened to me, which is the paper starts breaking down because you're rubbing it too much, or you're going to start picking up paint with your brush. So the idea is work on one layer, move to the next, and then just keep going in that order. So one layer, move to the next. Now I'm going to show you how to do the complementary one. These ones are fairly basic, right? You use white to create your highlight. So white paint, create a circle here. You use black to create your shadow. And then you just kind of move in a circular motion to bring it up. And in this case, the color is the midtone. In this case, gray is the midtone. So let's do it with the complementary. I've already, I'm going to use yellow and purple as my complementary pair. So I already have my yellow here. So I've created the base or the dominant color. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more because it's a little bit light. And same as these, I'm gonna be working from the bottom up. So I've got my yellow in. What I'm gonna do now is I have a purple that I already mixed. So I'm gonna pick up the purple with the paintbrush. So it's just a little bit of water going into the purple. I wanna have a good amount of purple on my brush. So now I'm gonna start at the very bottom, which is going to be the darkest area of my sphere. Okay, so I'm gonna create that stripe. Now these are two obviously very separate colors, so we're gonna to have to blend them together. I wanna be a little thick with my stripe because remember I'm adding the pigment so that they can be blended. And because yellow is my dominant color, that's probably the color I'm going to use for blending. The dominant color in this case is usually the one that's a little bit lighter. So I want to clean my brush, make sure it doesn't have any of that purple left on it. Now it's just with water. Then I'm going to use a circular motion. And I'm going to start melding the two together. I just want to get rid of that hard line. Okay, I'm going to do it by just bringing this stuff up. Working around the edges. Always keep in mind that you're trying to keep with the shape of the sphere. Okay, and then you're just gonna keep blending. So using that circular motion to kind of scrub it to blend into the yellow. You can see I'm starting to get a little bit of grainies. So if your paper's starting to pick up, that means it's getting too wet. You just wanna give it a rest for a minute. So I'm gonna smooth this one out a little bit last minute before it dries, and then I'll move on to the other one. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that one to dry, I'm gonna look at analogous colors. And we know that those are colors that are related to each other on the color wheel. So to mix things up, I'm gonna use green 
probably because I already have some green, and then yellow. So it'll be green, uh, blue, green, yellows around there. So I'm going to re-add my yellow a little bit, making sure it's strong because it's my dominant color again because it's the lightest. Then I have green on my palette already. Remember, it's easy to make green. It's just yellow and blue. And then the same way I did there, I'm just going to put it at the bottom of the sphere here. Okay, so try to be as neat as possible. Your marks on this are going to be if you understood the color harmony, so how the color interacted with each other, but also how neat you were with your technique. If it's everywhere, obviously it's going to be a problem. If you go out of the lines a tiny bit, it's not that much of an issue. So same way I did before, I'm just trying to smooth out these lines a little bit, making them nice. I can add more green in there. Remember, the more layers you do, the more saturation you're going to get with that color. So it's going to get brighter. Okay, so this one's a little bit easier. So I'm going to use the yellow to blend this in. Now I'm going to give that time to dry. Go back to this one. So you'll notice I'm jumping back and forth. That's because I want to give these time to dry. I don't want them to start rubbing through the paper. Okay, I'm going to add a darker layer of purple there to create the saturation at the bottom. Again, those circular motions really help blend together. Then, now I'm going to re-add my yellow. So I've got yellow on my brush, making sure I've got enough water on there so that it moves smoothly. There. Okay, so that's a good start. Now I can go back here, put in more green. And because this is analogous, I can't just stick with green. I'm going to add a little bit of blue. So green, you can mix the green with the blue. Or you could go straight blue. And that's going to be my darker tone. So if you look, I'm mixing three different colors on here, which you're going to do with the next two as well, the warm and the triadic. So I'm just going to add a thin line of blue. That makes the lighter green my mid-tone. Use water to smooth it out a little bit, blend it in. Again, it's starting to pick up on the paper, so I, I like the paper's getting all wet and kind of gritty. I want to be careful with that. I want to make sure my paper has time to dry. So I'm not going to scrub it as much. I'm just going to be a little more delicate. And then again, as you go, you just keep adding different colors. Now that the paper's actually wet, I can do a little bit of wet on wet. So that was one of the techniques we learned. And this is just me being very, very careful and just trying to get that really dark blue at the bottom where the shadow would hit because blue is going to be my darkest color here. So this is like about three or four layers of blue at this point. I'm just being very careful as I'm applying it. I don't want it to go everywhere. I don't want it to overpower. I just want a little bit of blue. There we go. And smooth it in. Okie dokie.
All right. So that's those two. Now I want you to do the same thing with all the other squares. Obviously I've only, or circles, sorry. I've obviously only shown you two of them, but I don't think I need to show you all of them. So we know, and you just keep adding. So if you look, I just keep going back. So it's because I will work on these all over and over again. You have two days for this assignment, so it has to be done tomorrow by the end of class. But remember, you need to take a break in between stuff. You need to give it a chance to dry. So then I could work on these or I can start on these. Right here, you'll notice it's kind of blotchy. I need to smooth that out. I need to add white to create my highlight and I need to strengthen and smooth out this layer. And the same thing here. This stuff takes time, so you can't rush through it. And I want you to make sure that there's a sphere shape. So I should always see a highlight, which is the lightest color, a mid-tone, which is like the middle color, and then a shadow, which is the darker color. So even in this one where it's complementary, my highlight is the bright yellow, my mid-tone is where the purple and the yellow are mixing, and my dark color is this pure purple, and I'll probably do a couple more layers to make it really pop. If you have any questions about this, just email me. Again, I'm gonna post this on the LMS so that you guys know what to do. And like I said, just keep giving it a try. Try to make sure that you've got your colors right, your saturation right, and you're being very, very neat. If you need to start over, feel free, we have some paper.